so girls we will start with the root okay so you can see here this is the transverse section of the root of netum now uh, just take a look at the figure okay I'm not going to uh, point out which are the different layers so you just uh, listen to the video and you uh, just take a look at the figure what do you see in the first the outer layer okay that first outer layer is the epiblema okay it is actually referred to as the epiblema or the epidermis and you can see in young root the outermost layer it is one cell okay single cell and it is also thick epiblema so you can also see the root hairs in the epiblema or the epidermis you can find the root hairs and uh, in other roots you have seen when we study about the uh, pinus and uh, cycles you have seen that in pinus especially if you remember that the cock cambium it originates in epi epiblema and it cuts a multi-layered cock cells towards the outer cell and parenchymata cell towards the inner side so we have those three layers if you don't remember then you can go back and uh, see in case of pinus so this also it happens in the uh, netum unlike angiosperms okay they don't have uh, such the the cock cambium it it does not divide into the outer cock cell and inner parenchymata cell and the next layer here below the epidermis we can see it is the cortex right the cortex here so the epiblema or the epidermis is followed by cortex and if you take a look at the cortex you can see that they are uh, it is multi-layered okay it is multi-layered and the cells here are parent chymatis okay with few thick walled fibrous cells you can see the fibrous cells which are fiber cells you can see here in these arrows these dark uh, in color those cells are the fiber cells which are scattered everywhere in the cortex and the living cells of the cortex or the poly, uh, parenchymata cells they are either oval or polygonal so just take a look at the cells of the cortex they are polygonal and also they are filled with starch so uh, you can see that some tannin cells are also present in the cortex next to the cortex it is followed by the endodermis so this endodermis again if you take a look at the endodermis it is single layered followed by the pericycle which is multi layered so these are the different layers now we come to the last uh, the middle portion here that is the vascular tissue okay so the vascular tissue here if you take a look they the primary vascular bundles they are radial remember if you remember we have studied about those uh, vascular bundles which are conjoined collateral but in this case they are radial where the xylem and the phloem just take a look at the xylem and the phloem they are arranged radially okay not collateral not conjoined they are not joined together but they are arranged radially separated by parent chymatis tissue and one more thing just remember here you have studied uh, like in pinus that the xylem moves of the uh, xylem which is uh, the uh, it is endarch okay that means the protoxylem is present towards the inner side the metaxylem towards the outside but in this case if you take a look properly the protoxylem in this arrow here the protoxylem it uh, it is present towards the periphery whereas the metaxylem it it is present towards the center towards the pith so the, in this case it is exarch okay not endarch it is exarch and also it is di or triarch diarch why because you can see two protoxyl uh, two xylems are present and also two phloems are present so it is either di or triarch triarch meaning if three xylem and three phloems are present so the the secondary growth also it happens okay the secondary growth in case of the uh, root of netum 
so the secondary growth it begins only in the vascular bundle there is a secondary growth so what happened here in the vascular bundle uh, a new cambium if you remember just like uh, in case of pinus we see that a new cambium is formed in the parenchymatous tissue okay between the primary xylem and the primary phloem so between these primary vascular bundles that is the xylem and the phloem there's there is a ring of cambium which form a new ring of cambium as you can see here okay this uh, new ring of cambium it cuts the secondary xylem just take a look at the secondary xylem it cuts the secondary xylem towards the center and the secondary phloem if you take a look at the secondary phloem it is present towards the periphery so this new cambium which is formed in the secondary growth it cuts just remember that it cuts the xylem the secondary xylem towards the center and the secondary phloem towards the periphery so if you take a look at the secondary xylem here what you can see it consists of tracheids okay it consists of tracheids with uniseriate border pits just like we had studied in case of pinus so i'm just i i'm not showing you again all those things you just remember here in this case also the secondary xylem it consists of tracheids which has those uniseriate bordered pits and vessels you can see the xylem vessels here in this arrow with small multi serial bordered pits and the xylem here it is traversed by broad parenchymatous medullary rays so just take a look at the arrow these are the medullary rays which runs through the xylem and these medullary rays just remember they are filled with crystals of calcium oxalate and the secondary phloem the secondary phloem which is present at the periphery of the vascular bundle okay this phloem it originates from different cells you can see here in this figure also it looks very different because it originated from different cells which are situated in different layers of cambium and the last thing here if you take a look at the pit the pit here it is parent chymatis and it consists of either oval or polygonal cells you can see the cells here are polygonal so girls this is the ts section of the stem okay the stem now in the young stem of netum plant it shows the outermost single layered epidermis as you can see here and it consists of either of rectangular cells okay with their outer walls thickened you can see it is covered by a thick cuticle you can see the thick cuticle here is present in the epidermis but then this cuticle is interrupted by the sunken stomata okay so you can see here clearly in the figure the presence of these sunken stomata which interrupted the epidermis and the cuticle below the cuticle we have the cortex again the cortex it is multi-layered and consists of parenchymatous cells and the outer few layers okay the outer few layers of uh, cortex they are chlorin chymatous meaning they contain green chloroplasts okay they contain green chloroplasts and this zone it forms the hypodermis so just below the uh, epidermis we have the cortex which contains the parenchymatous and the chloronchymatous cells containing green chloroplasts and forming the hypodermis in the older stems okay just remember that the hypodermis it also show the presence of sclerite cells and a large number of uh, specular cells impregnated with calcium oxalate crystals even in the pith you can see few cells containing the calcium oxalate crystals and this also we have done uh, 
I have explained to you when we study about cycles, so I'm not going to uh, explain in detail about these calcium oxalate crystals. So a, th a few thick walled fibrous cells, they are scattered in the uh, lower portion of the cortex. Okay, there are presence of the fibrous cells. Now just below the cortex, you can see here the, the epidermis as usual, the endodermis, sorry, the endodermis and the pericycle. Actually in young stem of netum, these two layers, they are very distinct. But when the uh, stem, it become older, then these, they are indistinct or ill-defined. Okay, so the last uh, layer here, the portion, the inner portion is the vascular system. And unlike the radial arrangement of vascular bundles, you can always fi find that in, you can always find the radial arrangement of vascular bundles only in case of roots. But in stem, you can see that the vascular bundles, they are conjoined collateral and due to the presence of the cambium, you can see here in this arrow, the cambium. So that means they are open. And also they are enlarged, meaning the xylem, you can see it's present towards the center, the phloem towards the periphery. So in this case, the vascular bundle is enlarged. And they are arranged in a ring. Here I'm just showing you just a small portion of the stem. Okay, not a full TS section. So in full TS section, you can see that they will they are arranged in a ring. And they resemble with those of dicotyledonous angiosperm angiosperms. The vascular bundles also in this case, just like in the case of the roots here also, they are separated by the parenchymatous medullary rays. And the xylem, it consists of tracheids, the xylem, parenchyma and vessels. Remember girls, you, uh, when we study about the cycas and pinus, you see that the vessels, they are absent in xylem. But here in case of netum, the vessels are present so this presence of vessels in the xylem is actually the characters of angiosperms which is not very common in gymnosperms and the tracheids here they are comparatively more in number than the vessels and they possess the uniseriate bordered pits with bars of sanyo if you remember in pinus also we have studied about these bars of sanyo which are also present in netum and the vessels they bear circular bordered pits the phloem it consists of sieve tubes and phloem parenchyma however the the phloem fibers they are present in uh, one of the species of netum that is netum ula and the pith here you can see it is parenchymatous and it occupies a large portion of the stem okay so in case of a uh, stem the pith is quite large as compared to the root so girls actually here the secondary growth in the stem also it occurs as in the case of pinus and cycas we have seen there is a secondary growth so the secondary growth in the in case of those netum species which are uh, which are shrubs and trees those they have a normal secondary growth but in case of a netum ula this is one of the species which is a climbing species okay it is a climber so here in case of these climbing species the uh, secondary growth is abnormal why we will see that later okay the secondary growth is abnormal and where you can see that the formation of many uh, cambium rings and vascular bundles okay the rings of vascular bundles if you remember we had studied this earlier in uh, cycus plan as well we can see the formation of many concentric rings of vascular bundles so here uh, the in case of these climbing species in netum you can see actually two types of rings cambium rings 
one it, it is concentric and the other it is eccentric so we will study that now in case of normal secondary growth the example is uh, netum nemen in this species it is occur by the formation of the intervascular cambium so just take a look at the first figure here number a the figure a if you remember girls the cambium here which is formed in between the vascular bundle that is the xylem and the phloem that is referred to as the vascular cambium right so the new cambium ring which is formed as you can see here it forms a ring and it joins all these six vascular bundles so this is referred to as the intervascular cambium so this also we had studied earlier the intervascular and the vascular cambium they will join together to form a complete ring of cambium and this vascular cambium as you can see here in this figure a it cuts the secondary xylem towards the inner side and the secondary xylem towards the outer side and the intervascular cambium it cuts the parenchymatous medullary rays because if you remember that in between these six just take a look at the figure a those spaces in between these six vascular bundles that is the medullary rays so the medullary ray is cut by the intervascular cambium and coming to that anomalous secondary growth okay which is abnormal which is found in the climbing species you can see here for example in netum ula it starts when the activity of the normal cambium ring it stops okay where the the it takes place by the formation of a second cambium ring now a second cambium ring will form outside the secondary phloem from the parenchymatous cell so you can see in the first figure where the uh, the cambium the intervascular cambium it form and it cuts the secondary xylem towards the inner and the secondary phloem towards the periphery whereas when this the function of this cambium it stops okay in case of climbers of netum which are climbing species so in this case what happened a new cambium ring will form outside the secondary phloem so that you can see in figure b as well as c so when they form they will cut secondary xylem towards the inner side and again the phloem the secondary phloem towards the outer side opposite to the xylem so the xylem and the phloem here they are uh, they are not formed in the form of a complete ring now but they develop in the form of conjoined collateral secondary bundles <coughs> you can see the primary bundles the first ring of vascular bundles then the second ring of vascular bundles arranged just outside the first ring and then the third ring will form due to the formation of another cambium ring okay so in this uh, way they form <clears throat> they form rings ma many rings so these bundles they are separated with each other by broad parenchymatous medullary rays okay by medullary rays which form from the cortex this <clears throat> this feature in which the formation of these cambium rings they are similar to that of the feature if you remember girls the feature in case of cycus plan so soon the activity of the second cambium ring also will stop when it stops then the third ring will start to develop outside so in this way you can see successive rings of cambia they develop one after the other giving rise to concentric rings of secondary vascular bundles some of the outer cambium rings they remain incomplete towards the side okay where the stem is pressed against the support because they are climbers like i had mentioned that they are climbers so in this case when the stem is pressed against the support the they result in the formation of eccentric rings of vascular bundles so you can see in case of figure a you can uh, sorry figure b you can see they there is a formation of concentric rings 
but due to when the new cambium ring will form one after the other till the fifth ring you can see the other side the below just below the figure c you can see that when the the stem is pressed against the support it will result in the formation of eccentric rings and not concentric rings so here girls the secondary xylem it consists of tracheids it consists of tracheids and uh, xylem parenchyma and also vessels okay you can see in this figure the presence of the vessels in the xylem the tracheids they are long thick walled and possess uniseriate circular bordered pits with bars of sanyo exactly just like in the case of pinus and the xylem parenchyma cells they are short and simple okay the parenchyma cells of the xylem they are short and simple and they possess pits okay the vessels they are spindle shape i will show you in this figure you can see uh, this figure a b and c it shows the vessels of netum so in this case you can see that the vessels they are spindle shaped and they usually possess single large perforations in black you can see the pore okay so they usually uh, possess single large perforations on their end walls but transitional stages from single row of simple perforations to single perforation are seen in their n wall okay so you can see in figure c where you can see the perforations in their n walls a row of perforations whereas in figure a and b you can see a single perforation now the presence of these vessels is the characteristic feature of netum okay which is not common in gymnospermic plants you can see in case of cycus and pinus there are no vessels in the xylem but in case of netum the vessels are present thus they resemble the angiospermic plants and the secondary xylem it consists of sieve tubes companion cells phloem parenchyma and in some cases they possess phloem fibers as, as well and the sieve tubes and companion cells they are formed from two different cells okay so this is a one characteristic which is a different from angiospermic plants now in some older stems if you remember in case of pinus also the stem the secondary growth of the stem uh, the cambium which is present in the cork it is it gives rise to the cork cambium okay to the cork cambium to the outer layer towards the outer side it forms the cork cambium that is the phallogen and towards the inner side it forms the living cell okay the parenchymatous cell towards the inner side and this cork layer is interrupted at many places because of the presence of the lenticles as you can see in this figure the medullary rays also they are uh, uni serial and in some case they are multi serial okay so the this is the tangential longitudinal section of xylem which shows uh, in figure d the multi serial and in figure e the uni serial medullary rays so we will uh, take a look now at the tear section of the leaf it is very simple okay as we have already studied other gymnosperm plants now the upper you can see in this figure that the upper and the lower epidermis they are single layered okay they are single layered and they are surrounded by an outer thick cuticle so the cuticle is very thick and the stomata if you see that the stomata here you can see they are present only in the lower epidermis and not on the upper epidermis okay so just remember this important point and the stomata of uh, netum ula some of the stomata actually in the netum plant they are haplocalic this haplocalic condition i had already uh, explained before also that means the subsidiary cells they are not formed from the stomatal initial 
whereas the subsidiary whereas in some uh, netum plant the the stomatal initial they give rise to two guard cells and two subsidiary cells so in this case the the netum okay the the stomata they are said to be uh, sind sinditokelic okay just remember this term sinditokelic meaning the stomatal initial they give rise to the two guard cells and two subsidiary cells in the stomata whereas in case of haplocalyx stomata the subsidiary cells they are not formed from the stomatal initial okay they are formed from the other cells now the mesophyll is differentiated into a palisade layer you can see here in this figure this is the mesophyll tissue so it is differentiated into a palisade layer which is present towards the upper side of the leaf and a spongy layer a spongy parenchyma which is present towards the lower side of the leaf so you can see the upper side palisade and the lower side is the spongy parenchyma and there are a number of irregular scattered sclerotic cells you can see the sclerotic cells they are not only present in the uh, stem but also in the leaf if you remember even in the stem you can see many sclerotic cells so in the leaf also there are many sclerotic cells present and also the fibers and lacticiferous tubes in the spongy parenchyma are present okay so the midrib the midrib the mid portion of the leaf that is the midrib is very thick and it shows the presence of these uh, several vascular bundles in this case you can see uh, six vascular bundles okay they are arranged in the shape of an arc okay an arc of a circle i think you know what is an arc so they are arranged in the shape of an arc and patches of stone cells can be found okay towards the lower side of the vascular bundles you can find patches of stone cells and also these uh, patches of stone cells they are found towards the lower side of the vascular bundles and the vascular bundles they are conjoined they are joined together they are collateral and also they are endarch why because you can see here that the xylem it is present towards the inner side and the phloem towards the periphery so that means they are endarch with the xylem facing towards the upper surface okay so this is the ts section of the leaf